This is a CircuitBent Casio SA2. It's a small, kind of cheesy sounding keyboard that I've done a number of modifications to that uh, expand the usability of it and give it some integration with modern gear. The uh, Casio SA series of keyboards have been kind of a mainstay in circuit bending, uh, especially for me having built out a ton of these in the past, and this is definitely one of the more complex SA2s that I've done to date. Uh, this has some carefully selected modifications that I thought were some of the more useful and uh, it's also about as many as I could fit in here while still being able to close the thing back up. So the SA2 is only about a foot or so in length, and unlike some devices that have been circuit bent, I left the internal speaker intact. So you do not need to hook it up to an external device to use it. Though if you'd like to, I've also added uh, this 8 inch audio jack over here. So down here on the bottom right, we've got our main on and off switch. You'll notice we have some LEDs in the back. Those respond to audio a little bit. Uh, we do still have our stock on and off switch here that also lets us pick between low and high volume, but it's always nice on these circuit bent devices to have a hard cut to the battery line. Now over here, this is gonna be our main feedback type distortion knob. This also has an on and off switch and a CV input. Over here, this switch also corresponds to that same feedback type of distortion, though this lets you control it through this small light dependent resistor. So if I were to flip this switch up, that will engage this circuit, and this will let us control that with the amount of light hitting this sensor. These three black buttons right here correspond to drum triggers for the kick, the snare, and the hi-hat. So you can trigger those manually, but we also have eighth inch jacks, so you can send gate signal to each of those and sequence the drum sounds externally. This blue button here is the glitch button. Pressing it will cause the SA2 to start glitching out, though it may take a couple tries to land on something stable. Uh, it's pretty unpredictable, though it'll often latch onto the last sound that you were playing. Uh, this knob is a way to randomize it a bit and kind of dial in the depth of the glitch. So if it's not acting in a way that you'd like, try moving it to a new spot. There's a really wide variety of odd sounds you can get out of this thing. And sometimes it will cause it to crash. If that happens, all you need to do flick the on off switch. So uh, maybe better for sampling, less so for live use just because it's a little unpredictable um, and it will require you to reset. And if you have to do that, then you would also have to uh, pick your voice again because it does default to piano. This switch right here causes a kind of buzzy distortion type thing that I thought worked well with the other distortion. Now the last thing that I've added to this keyboard is kind of like a uh, hidden features access switch or a hidden tone select switch. So the Casio SA2 only has 44 voices for us to pick from. Uh, we pick those using buttons 1, 2, 3, and 4. But if we had buttons 5 through 10, we could actually access all of the other sounds of the keyboard because all 100 sounds of the Casio SA series of keyboards are actually in the SA2. We just have to access them. So by flipping this switch, some of these keys are now acting like tone select switches. So this is now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that goes all the way from tone 0, 0 to 99. 
um, which you can reference on other keyboards like the SA9 that has all 100 voices. So let's say I want 62 wow voice. Wow. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 2, 6, 2. Turn the switch off. Fun fact, that's uh, the sound from sicko mode. So yeah, now we have access to all 100 sounds from uh, all those other keyboards that the SA2 locked us out of. So then the last thing to demo here would be the CV and gate inputs. So let's start a sequence on the Mother 32. Let's send the gate to the kick. So now we've obviously got a kick on every single step. Uh, let's occasionally trigger the snare. And let's try sending the envelope generator to our feedback. And for these uh, these drum gate inputs, you aren't limited to uh, to gate signals. You can also feed it something like a square LFO. Though there will be a speed cap right around there. So thank you for checking this out. Uh, this instrument is for sale. You can head over to glikes.net and go to the store for more information if you are interested. Uh, I've got a couple things up there right now. I've also got a catalog of previous builds and I do take commissions for uh, custom builds if you see anything that you're interested in. So take care and I will see you on the next one.